after I was there, a lot of names you guys would never heard of. Marvin Barnes, maybe one of the best players I have ever laid eyes on. Moses Malone, Caldwell Jones, Maurice Lucas, um, Ron mm -hmm. Boom, uh, Freddie Lewis, um, uh, I don't want to, uh, Don Chaney, ML Carr, Gus Gerard, Mike D'Antoni, um, on and on. You know, it, there were some pretty doggone players, good players in the ABA. That's an amazing list. It's, yeah, fantastic. Amazing. So you did three years with the, in, in the ABA, correct? Correct. Why did you stop playing? When the merger took place, I was kind of merged out. Didn't have – that was pretty much it. Um, I had, obviously, not much of a career – I started most of my second year with the Squires, and then I was traded, um, you know, just a pretty nondescript career. Um, but, you know, an experience it was. I can't say it was fantastic. It wasn't horrible. Um, when you get to that level and you start playing, you think, oh, I'm going to do this for 10 years. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's over. Um, and then you have, to, you have to move on. Sure, sure. Well, we definitely want to hear some stories, and we're going to take this now <laughs> to the impression series that TW runs a segment that's fantastic. It shows your pictures, so we'll hear hopefully hear some of those stories during that time. Whoa! And here's the first one. The caval. It says the Cavalier Captains. It's a it's a photo from the program, and it has you and Jim Hobgood. I was going to say I remember Jim as as the radio guy. Maybe you could – I'm sure a lot of fans remember him as well, so many years on the radio. What, can you tell us a, a, a time, a story or two of that, of that time? Sure. Jimmy was from Uniontown, Pennsylvania, where Gus Gerard was also from. And I read about Jim when I was in high school. He was an all-state player. Union, his high school, Laurel Highlands, won a state championship. I watched him on TV. We were co-captains. We roomed together our second year. Jim it was an underrated rebounder and a great shooter, left-handed. He would have thrived with three-point shot. I look at that picture, number one, the shorts, and number two, I wish I had some of that hair back in the color of that hair. <laughs> <laughs> what about the sneakers? Oh, God, the best. Would you have jumped yeah, higher? Would you have jumped higher with the Nike shoes today? <laughs> you know what, Mark? With the shoes and the floor these kids play on today, I didn't have – I. I had some pretty decent hops. I could have jumped better with, with the technology. Yeah. All right. And, and then. Me too. Know, <laughs> we, ha we haven't talked about this. Um, this is 71 in front of now gone U-Haul. Uh, I originally had the U-Haul demolition picture in here, but I thought it, I'd, I'd you pick a, a more positive one. What do, what do you remember about this? Does this ring any? Uh, uh, I'm thinking that would have been looking at the players my third year. Um, gosh, I'm looking at two guys, two better, my best friends who have since passed away. That's Coach Gibson holding the trophy. That might have been uh, – we played in a tournament down in Charleston, South Carolina, and we won the tournament. That might have yeah. been when we came back. Um, you know, those are, that was a really good team. Um, and I can't tell you stories about that Charleston tournament, unfortunately. There's some good ones. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think some real think, good ones. <laughs> I think the, the caption was, um, for, for this one was, this is, um, a picture celebrating the first time we were, uh, I think, ranked in 17 years and we have winning that that chance of a picture of kind of the, this is the first picture of putting Virginia on the map, which I thought was really cool. And it's front of you. All. You know, that, that would have been my third year, my second year, we went through a stretch where we were, we got ranked for, for the first time ever for a basketball team. Um, this, this season, we got up as high as six in the country. Um, and we, we lost some games 10, down the stretch. Yeah. But we, we got it going pretty good uh, that year. That's awesome. Uh, next one. Oh, good <laughs> lord. <laughs> this is a tops photo. <laughs> if you dribble, dribbling with that ball. 
What that, do you is, that Pete, is that Pete Maravich or Mr. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you remember about this photo shoot and this tops? Like what, what, are, what happened with this? Do you know, do you remember? Well, obviously nothing happened with the, the uh, bubble gum card, but I remember we had just gotten some <laughs> new uniforms. Uh, but other than that, and, and back then Converse came out. If you guys remember with a leather shoe that I wore, I think my third year, but back then they still had canvas Converse. Uh, not much to remember, though, about that, other than uh, I still wish I had some of that hair back. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And then going on to some, some UVA stuff, I, I was just curious. I, obviously, you were in the ABA during this time. Um, are you just left? What, what are your recollections of what, what, what was your relationship with Virginia at the time <laughs> of this? This is the game of the decade, Ralph Ewing. Vividly remember the game. Honestly, I can't remember the year and as to where I would have been. Um, I was probably at that time coaching at William and Mary. And I don't even know if I watched the game because we probably had a game that night, but I do remember we beat them. Um, it was a, obviously a huge game, um, but that's uh, maybe one of the bigger college basketball games ever. If you think about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, That's got to be 82 or 83, right? Am I right? Got to be early 80s, yes. 82, I believe. Yeah, because I remember. And, yeah, I remember. And then a s similar one. This is a picture <laughs> of the one the, of the upset that we think about with Chaminade, guys on the rim. What, what do you, where, where were you? What do you remember about, about this, this game and this upset? Uh, again, I, I'm sure I was still coaching. Um, remember reading about it. Um, you know, there's there's a bit of a, a shock. I've made this comment, and I'll, I'll make it here, that when we lost to UMBC, I'll bet you all the players at Virginia who played on this team breathed a little bit of a sigh of relief <laughs> based on the <laughs> magnitude of the upset. But you know what? This game is highlighted every year at Thanksgiving. Yep. When they have those tournaments out in Hawaii. Yep. And I'm sure the same thing will happen with the UMBC game. But you know what? Guess what happened a year later? <laughs> That's right. That's right. I think that young man is from Virginia in that picture. Yeah. He's, it was, he played in Ralph's high school, right? That's, that's it. Something like that, yes. And then, oh, wow. and then next um, – the P. Gillen era. I know you were at, at the university at this time. Yes. I just wanted you to comment in terms of what it was like then getting, asking for donations and all during that sort of like rough patch. You know, it, any time that we're doing something in athletics, when things are going well, the conversations are a little bit easier. Um, as you, you guys all know, Pete got it going here. Mm -hmm. um, I remember a, a loss we had we were ranked in the top 10 we're playing Maryland at home they were ranked that's the year they won the national championship and we were ahead three minutes ago and I remember I think it was Travis Watson who by the way in my opinion is one of the very most underrated players that ever played here I think he missed a foul shot Maryland ended up winning the game and teams kind of went in opposite directions but Pete's a great guy He's, I don't know how many, Pete's won like three or 400 Division I college basketball games. Not many guys can put themselves in that class. Um, and again, he really got it going here. And in terms of like your outreach, because I remember that time there was a lot of complaints about U-Haul and JPJ was coming. Was that a crazy busy like time for you? Yes. Um, conversations, again, when, when, when you don't have it going, there are some people that said, hey, come, I'm asking people, we're all asking people to make big investments. And people are saying, well, come back when, when we're better. And, and my comment was, this new arena will help us be better. Sometimes people don't want to hear it. Um, that's fine. Right. Uh, but we got it done. And, you know, as they say, the rest Amazing. is history. Absolutely. And then the next one. <laughs> This is the guys marching on the lawn. Where where were you when you heard this? What what was going through your mind? Given I was at the home. conversation we I was, had, I was home that weekend. Um, it 
the one thing I take away from that weekend, which I think is really unfair, that impacted so many people. But I think some people realize and some don't that that really impacted Coach Bennett and our basketball program. Because a lot of kids, I, I believe at that point in time, it was August, and they were committed to visiting University of Virginia. They didn't commit to come here, but they were committed to visiting. And when this took place in Charlottesville, a lot of kids decommitted on their visit. Yeah. And they probably heard from opposing coaches that were telling them, look what's going on in Charlottesville. Do you want to go to University of Virginia? And How that's can you what not, I think though, right? right? How can you not be concerned? Yeah, I, yes, I hear you. Um, I, the whole thing was just really sad. That, that could have happened anywhere. Yeah. It just happened to happen here in Charlottesville. Um, I think there's still, there's still things that have happened since then, but I think, I think hopefully we're past all that. But I think that, that impacted everybody, but it really impacted, uh, I remember, the, the basketball program. And, Mark, you're, Mike, you've talked about it a little bit, but like you said, you had a call with Coach Bennett, right? Yeah, when, when it, as soon as it happened, I was in Vermont with Ty, with my two sons, and um, we're watching it on TV and we're following it and reading about it. And uh, I was immediately concerned and, uh, and, and just thinking about, like, this is where my child, this is really where my child goes to school? Right. This is unreal, right? All right, let's, let's I think, say... I think well, I think what Mr. Parker was saying without saying it and the way I looked at it, aside from how obvious, how bad everything was, that's not Charlottesville. That's not it's the not, University of Virginia. It's not. Like, we know that, right? That's not, right. That's not what people are really family. Right, related. right. But as, as a parent, right, your child's got to be around that. Right. And then uh, when right. are they going to come back, right? And what happens if they do come back? Right? How's it going to be handled? And how was it handled when it, when it was going on? So, obviously, this, this question is for you, Mark. That, that scenario that we just brought up, let's just say the timing is different. Ty's about to, has scheduled his official visit. This happens to UVA. What, what's, are, are you, you, know, you come from a family that, that has stood up for this. Right. Would, you, would you? No, it's a good question. And my parents, both, my parents, both of my parents were on the front lines of the civil yeah. rights movement, right? right. Marching, right. protesting, you know, and, and I'm sure, like, like, like Barry said, that there were probably tons of coaches who were trying to dissuade people, right. recruits from going to UVA and pointing at this incident. I don't think that, you know, I don't, first of all, we shouldn't run from it, right? And we should, we should confront it and deal with it. But also, I agree that it's not the University of Virginia. How many of these people were actually from Charlottesville versus how many people came to, you know, came in from other states right. or other places. Right. But also, I think it's also what, what, what some of this is missing and what we're not talking about is why this protest happened, right? And, and what's, what's the perception and also what, what's the representation of what people believe of the statues on campus or the statues downtown? Right. And, right. and I think that has something to do with it. And, and I think it was important to those statues can, can represent painful memories and painful thoughts for a lot of people. Right. Right. And I think if, um, if, if there are people who are, and, and UVA Bennett was outstanding when I had the conversation with him. Right. And I think that's, he represents anybody else so I've much. talked to. Right. Anybody else I've spoken with that, that represents UVA. Right. His, how is he's a reflection, I think, of the university and, and, and of how and the administration and anybody else I've spoken to about it. It was actually very comforting. All right, I'll lighten the mood. We talked about this earlier. Short shorts <laughs> coming back. What are, you, what are your thoughts, no. Mr. Park? Wait a minute. Did you see his reaction? Did you see, did you see Barry's reaction? I mean, these are, yeah, they, they, this is not, I mean, they're rolling them up to look like he used to look. For the audience members, Barry Parkhill's reaction was immediate disbelief. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're looking at a picture of Chris Paul and James Harden, whose shorts are rolled, rolled up. All the way up. Quads up. Their thighs. Quads out. Those are a lot longer than ours, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know what? I don't, I don't really have a reaction. I think it's <laughs> what, what looks decent and what's comfortable. 
is really important. Um, I, I'm not seeing this one. I know a lot of kids now, they're not rolling them up from the bottom. They're rolling the waistbands yeah. to bring the shorts up. Um, I kind of like the, the NBA, I believe, they used to have a, a rule where you had to be so many inches above your kneecap. Um, right. right. You remember way, you know, years ago, guys were, you know, guys were wearing shorts and they were going below their knees. I don't know. I yeah. could play in that. LeBron. Yeah, it reminded yeah. me of pedal jumpers or pedal pushers, whatever we called them back then. Um, also, it's crawling, you know, drilling between your legs there. I was always worried the ball would get hung up in the shorts. Right. Down there. And Could then, you do that, Doug? Did I do what? Could you dribble through my legs? <laughs> I was better behind the back. <laughs> Le left to right only. And then here, this next photo. Oh, my man. The ABA All-Star. Yeah. And iconic in turn, like, you know, when I think of dunk contests, this is who I think about. Not Jordan, but that's also ages me a little bit. What, what do you remember about those dunk contests in the ABA did, we, did you have did you go to them did you see them in person did you no I never went to to the all-star game of course um you know it's interesting doc was here a couple of years ago at a football game and I ran into him uh at halftime chatted for a little bit we had a Virginia Squires reunion many years ago where doc came George Gervin came a lot of the guys came it was really fun if you guys the next time you have a a basketball in your hands. Doc, with his hand, his hand was enormous. He could he could overlap three sections of a basketball. And you check it out the next time you have a basketball in your hands. But I remember one game, and I I can't I can't use the language. We were playing. Is it okay to tell these stories? Oh yeah, please. I, I I'll fill in I'll fill in for the language. Don't worry. We were we were playing. <laughs> the, the New York Nets mark out in Long Island at the uh, Nassau County Coliseum. Yeah, yeah, sure. And um, I think it was my second year. I was, I was the only point guard then. I mean, I, I was playing. We were playing four nights in a row and playing 40 minutes. And we're playing the Nets, and they're really good. And I used to have to guard Brian Taylor. Um, and there was a play where the Nets had the ball. I'm guarding Brian, and Julius does some move along the baseline. He goes up and just crushes it. And I turned to look at him. I went, holy mackerel. I didn't exactly say it that way. He said, <laughs> I see that every day in practice, too. He did things that were just – I wish they had highlights of him in the ABA. Yeah. He did a lot of those things in the NBA, but he was so electric. Uh, and he played on a really good team as well. I mean, I, I – I just, as as a kid, there wasn't a lot of ABA highlights that you could see, but when they showed it, they did the free throw one, and then they did the one where the Lakers, Michael Cooper, where he went over, and then they did the one in the baseline where he curls almost out of bounds and back around, and, like, you know, the NBA is fantastic. You saw that thing a hundred times every season. <laughs> like, it was amazing. You guys have seen, there's a highlight that st they still show me once in a while. It was a, a Sixer-Laker game. Jabbar was playing. Yep. Doc goes up and under and flicks the ball off the board, twists it, and it spins it in. Back in the ABA, he'd come around the other side and dunk it. He'd flush it. He wouldn't just flip it off the board. Um, the, the guy was just, just amazing. And a really good guy. Really, really good guy. And then back – we're going to jump back to – oops. Back to UVA here. Uh, and, wow, I can't seem to get out of – Oh, the doc, the doc won't leave go. us. There we go. Oh, man. Purdue. The Purdue game. Oh, God. This is, this is Tony Bennett screaming after cutting down the net, just so for the listeners, not viewers. We, we were at that game, obviously. Um, I'll never forget that game and that picture. I think the emotions were pretty incredible from a guy who – pretty good about keeping things on an even keel. Uh, never forget that picture. And is that, is that, Have you seen a better college basketball game than that one? And you've spent plenty of years to be an expert on this. No, especially with what's on the line. We've seen all seen great, great games. But what was on the line there and how – I mean, 
everybody talks about the kid from Purdue. We played a doggone good game. Yeah. And we just did what we had to do. Um, and the high, the high level of plays that individual players made both ways to me was – re-watching it was incredible. Absolutely. And where were you actually standing when he was making the screen? Were you on the court or were you – No. I tell you what, I had really good seats, and a buddy of mine who's a great supporter couldn't come, so I, he, we, I flip-flopped my wife and I into his seats. We were probably, I don't know, eight or nine rows behind our bench, so I was – I was looking right at it. Um, just, just amazing. Um, and then the flip side of that. <laughs> this is a picture of oh yeah the UMBC retrievers mm -hmm. making a layup. What where like what what was going through your mind at that point? Right, you like we we lose that game. Where were you first off? Were you at the or the at the? I was about. Game? a little higher up behind our bench. I was maybe 30 rows behind our bench. And, you know, I do remember the emotions, you know, halftime, it's close. We'll, we'll be fine. They started off, I think they scored eight points in a row. Right. Didn't feel that nervous. And then, you know, with about, I don't know, 12, 10 minutes ago, you sort of had that feeling. And it, you got to the point you could see it on our guys' faces. Right. Um, and I don't think what you hear that much is, the kind of game that UMBC played, I mean, they, they played a heck of a game. you got to give them some credit. Um, but it, it's, it's an amazing story, you know, after the fact, based on what happened, the result of this game, and then what happened a year later. So when you're – so after this, obviously this offseason, you're making calls, catching up with donors and, and the likes – what is the what is the sentiment? What is the mood? Is it embarrassment? Is it what is it? Embarrassment? I would say no. Some people might say that. I would say it's just people are disappointed. But you know what? Because of the 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 character that Tony has and his family and his coaches and the players, you know what? I think people felt really bad for them. Not embarrassed. Right. right. They feel bad for him, and you just move on. And nobody moved them on better than Tony did and, and our players, the way they handled it and the way they moved forward from it. Right. And as a, as a coach, if you went into the season, Coach Park Hill, and somebody said, you're going to lose three games this year out of 35, you'll probably take that every time, right? I'm, every I'm time. not telling you what game it's going to be, but you're going to lose oh, three. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, and then, and, I mean, what, comparing that to the mood versus – after the Chaminade game, I mean, obviously you were you were at William Mary, you were coaching. The kid, like, what what was that emotion like for you, comparatively speaking? Well, no comparison, T.W. Because I was somewhere else then. Yeah. Uh, I cared, but I was coaching somewhere else and living a different life. Right. Versus this one, I'm I'm working in athletics. I'm. Yeah. You're in it. I'm I'm totally tied in in every way possible, and just. And I, I remember after the game, I took a, a friend and supporter back to his home. And I left Tony a voicemail message. And I said, don't, don't call me back. But I just, I, I felt for him. And I just conveyed that in my message. And I, I remember back, guys, when we lost in Chicago Man. to go to the Final Four to Syracuse. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I remember I felt bad for our team, but I felt bad for, for Coach Bennett. And he, his post-game remarks, and he did the same thing at this game, pick people up, just the way he handles it. And very few coaches could have done that. Um, and probably, probably a lot of coaches would not have gone on national TV right. after the NBC game. He did it, and there's nobody that handles it better than Tony. Yeah, that was, and the, yeah, both of those are incredible, I think. We'll move on. The the polar <laughs> opposite of this. This is Minneapolis, Roger Mason, Harold Dean, Josh Ayer, Sean Singletary, Malcolm Brogdon, OG Whitebone, whoever that is. <laughs> where, where were you? What, what is your story on, on – that, that championship weekend, getting to Minneapolis. I was, I mean, I was there. I took the charter up Friday. There was a, uh, 
a pregame get together of a lot of former players on Saturday afternoon, which I went to for a while. A ton of former players were there, which I thought was really cool. I was so wound up and nervous. I went there for a while. I went to the, uh, the arena and I just wanted to take it all in, um, which I did. And my wife made the call before that she was not going to go. And so I'm there by myself and I talk to my wife multiple, multiple times a day on Sunday, we're talking. And she says, doggone it, I used to work in athletics and here I am at home and we're playing a national championship game. I made right. a couple calls, sent a couple emails out and got her a flight up on Monday, private flight. I gave her my seat on the flight back to Charlottesville on Tuesday morning and I got a ride back with a friend. Um, so we were able to take it in together and well, I mean, what can you say guys, you, you could write a book about this. It was just an amazing experience. So cool just to see that. All right. This next segment, <laughs> we're going to call this buy, sell or trade in terms of, you know, this is, this, these are cards. I pulled up some old cards. One of your thoughts on, on these guys. Well, now, when you say buy, sell, or trade. Buy, buy one, sell one, trade one. I am going to uh, probably give you an answer you don't want to hear. <laughs> I'm buying them all. Um, <laughs> Othell Wilson, incredibly talented player. Um, you know, I think he was NBA caliber. He got a little bit of a smell at the NBA. Rick Carlisle, great player, overachiever. Uh, had a hell of a career playing, and he's one of the best NBA coaches ever. I can't – I will not tell you that I have a favorite Virginia player. I, I can't say that because there's too many, but Jeff Lamb's one of them. Um, unbelievable player. I get a chance to talk to Jeff hopefully once a year, see him every once in a while. He used to come back and work the NBA Players Association camp that was held at the John Paul Jones Arena that's been canceled. Um, the guy was just a stud and, and not only a great player, but just one of those guys that he did whatever it took to win games. And his teammate, high school teammate in college, to me is also one of the most underrated players ever at Virginia. And that is – actually, there are two of them. One is Lee Raker. The yes. other is Jeff Jones. If Jeff Jones plays on a different team, he, he – Jeff Jones could play. He just yep. had Ralph Sampson, Jeff Lamb, Lee Raker to throw it to. But he was a great player. That's awesome. And then we got two more of the, this style. We got Corey Alexander, rookie card. Roger Mason, John Crotty. Um, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm buying them all. Roger Mason, <laughs> talented. John Crotty, again, you got to say, guys, he had probably one of the best NBA careers of any guy that ever played professional basketball at Virginia. He's also one of the most underrated players. Yeah, um, absolutely. Still in the game. Um, but, uh, again, I, I'm taking them all. And, and Roger Mason talked about it. you helped him get home after, after Minneapolis. <laughs> it's who you know sometimes, DW. He, he was like, yeah. You know, he, he at first he kind of mentioned the, I wouldn't say fractured relationship with the university, but he just always felt like because he left early, people didn't really care about him. But then he was like, no, Barry takes care of me, which I think is pretty cool. I care about them all. And then last one. You got Don Staley, Brian Stith, and Malcolm Brogdon, because this, this leads into wow. the freshest question. But I mean, you got to say Don Staley – maybe the one of the best women basketball players ever at any level period that's right yeah and now she's one of the best coaches but just an unbelievable player uh, and the credentials aside which they're great she was just phenomenal brian stiff you know total stud just you know the kind of player you want on any team great kid um I don't know that he's underrated, but, you know, he's got to go down as one of the couple best players ever to play at this university and had a great pro career, great family. 
Malcolm, I mean, I think Malcolm's going to be president of the United States somewhere down the line. Um, I, I've, I know Malcolm pretty well and incredible career. Um, great ambassador. Um, you know, he's just a great human being that happens to be a great basketball player. All right. All right. That's the end of it. We appreciate that. I'll let Dougie take over in the last question.